Okay, so our next presenter is uh, Matt, or Matthew, uh, from Amadeus. Uh, I'd like to invite you to come to the stage now. Uh, Matt is going to be uh, speaking about the lessons learned supporting development. Hey guys, Hi, thanks for joining me. Great. So if you can uh, start your presentation, and maybe uh, hit the high bar. Um, perfect. I'll leave you to it. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Did you know that a recent study by Salesforce revealed that nearly half of customers would stop buying from a company if their experience is subpar? On the same study, found that nearly three quarters of those customers now think it's easier than ever to change uh, business. Now, please keep this in mind, and let's look at a chart that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. This is the growing amount of open APIs listed on programmable web now reaching more than 23,000. So why am I showing you this exactly? Well, because customer support has never been more important than now, having a key impact on customer adoption all the way to customer retention. Bad developer support will make it harder for anyone to be successful with your API and will make your current users more likely to leave you. My name is Matt Pinkovai from Amadeus for Developers. To those of you who don't know Amadeus, we are one of the biggest IT providers in the travel industry. And today I want to talk to you about developer support. It's an area I've been uh, heavily involved in in the last couple of years. In fact, since the launch of our open API program, I've been the main point of contact on our support channel, helping developers integrate our technology to power their travel applications. And in this presentation, I will share with you seven key points that I've learned in this time that you should consider in your customer support strategy. So to start with, my first recommendation is to ensure that people do not get lost in your internal support processes. By that, I mean, make sure that they are not sent across many different teams in your organization to get an answer, or that you don't lose too much time waiting for a response from someone in your company. Otherwise, your users will end up feeling like they've been left outside in the cold, and obviously, you don't want that. So how to avoid it? Well, first of all, you should ask yourself, who are the knowledgeable people in your organization? This might not apply to all of you, but if you work in a big company with many different business units and many different development teams, it can get pretty messy. So try to establish from the beginning who are the knowledgeable people in your company. And I'm sure you all have a lot of smart individuals around you, so don't let that go to waste. Second question you should ask yourself is, can I expect an answer from these people quickly? It's uh, no use to know who to contact if you can't expect a quick answer. And if your experts are always busy or spread across many different time zones, it can get tricky. So if that's the case, it might be a good idea to introduce yourself or maybe agree on some sort of internal essays for tougher questions so you know when to expect an answer back. And lastly, try to consider all the gaps you might have. Perhaps you have enough technical experts, uh, but you might be missing some people for industry type questions. In our case, for example, we receive a lot of questions on the travel industry, but being able to rely on experts in our company for those sort of questions is very helpful. You will not only save a lot of time, but you will create some sort of a safety net for whoever's uh, handling your support, as they can fall back on someone in case they're, they're stuck. Now, my next recommendation is to adopt a self-service mindset. This means giving developers all the resources they need to be able to find answers by themselves without having to contact your support. To me, this is critical of any open API program. If anyone from around the world can connect your API, you need to give them the tools necessary to be successful. That means making your answers self-service. How to do that exactly? First of all, open documentation. That is essential. Your documentation section should be available to everyone with enough examples on how to call each one of your APIs with all the different parameters available. Better yet, why not consider making your documentation section interactive? That way developers can quickly test your APIs directly from the portal if they wish. Guides are of course also very important. So try to anticipate all your main pain points and create some relevant guides around them. Each time you receive a question on a re recurring topic for your support, you should consider creating a guide around it. And even better yet, uh, SDKs on prototype. If you have the time and resources, consider uh, building SDKs on prototype. They're great to include in your answers. In our case, we often got questions on how to build a flight booking engine. So we decided to build a demo application around it to showcase it to our users. And now we actually include it in most of our uh, answers on this topic. It takes a lot of time, but it's definitely worth it. On a similar story with SDKs, uh, they will help developers a lot. In our case, we used to get a lot of questions on our authentication process when we first uh, launched our program. And now that we have many SDKs, we barely get any on, on those. 
In general, also, I must say that you need to be fully transparent uh, with your users. And the documentation should definitely reflect that. Developers put a lot of trust in companies when they rely on their technology. So you need to give them enough information from the start to decide on whether or not to use your technology. If your API has a limitation, you need to mention it and make it obvious to all your users. Now, when a user reports a bug, I would also recommend the person that answers your emails to carry out a first level of investigation. The reason I'm saying this is that a significant amount of questions we receive come from developers that haven't looked for the answers. So maybe the bug they reported isn't a bug after all. A typical uh, example for us is when users contact us asking why they can't return a specific flight using our flight search API. And in most cases, it's because they're still using the test environment, which is based on a subset of the production. And this is something that they would pick up really easily if they had read the documentation. So if someone reports a bug to you, the first thing you should do is try to reproduce the error. You don't even need to be a developer for that. With tools like Postman, anyone can uh, test an API without writing a single line of code. Simply try the API call your user did and try to establish where the issue is coming from. If the issue is API related, uh, then send it to your technical team for investigation and resolution. If the issue is not API related, but perhaps the developer did not understand something, then you should consider updating your documentation, especially if you see this topic being raised again by many other developers. This worked very well for us, as most of the questions we uh, received are not technical, but tend to focus on maybe more functional aspects of the API or how the travel industry works. So by doing this first level of investigation, we can reduce the stress that's put on our technical team that can only then focus on real, real issues. Now, of course, <laughs> quick word on tooling. Uh, you need to consider a couple of tools uh, in your program, starting with uh, an API monitoring tool. And I'm saying this because you should be the first person to know when you are facing an issue of your APIs. You don't want to, uh, you don't want your users to notify you of problems. That's already uh, way too late. So one way to do that is to use a, a monitoring tool. We use Runscope. Uh, it allows you to schedule loads of tests uh, for each of your APIs. In our case, we test both the, the test and production environment with calls every 10 to 15 minutes. We call all our APIs with random inputs, and each time we have a, an outage or an issue, we create a ticket for our, our technical team to investigate. This tool also gives you access to all the logs and timestamp needed for, for investigations, so it's very useful. Each time you, you pick up an issue, you can raise it to your technical teams without losing much time. And then, of course, you have some nice features, like, for example, changing the IP address of where you're, uh, you're calling your API from. So this can be very useful if, for example, you have a user on the other side of the globe complaining about your response time. That way, you can actually test the API using an IP address from their country and establish if it is, in fact, an API issue or something in their code that is slowing down the application. In general, I must say that you need to be very proactive when it comes to catching issues. Don't wait for your users to, to tell you that you have something wrong. Unfortunately, uh, if you do, you will receive a lot more uh, complaints uh, than if you had fixed it uh, earlier. My next recommendation is, of course, to invest in a support tool from the very start. So that might seem obvious to some of you, but it's not something that we did right away in our team, and we regretted it later on. So at the beginning, we started answering all our emails using uh, Outlook, um, tagging them in different colors according to their the status and things like that. It's doable, but I would advise against it uh, because as soon as you start having uh, multiple issues at the same time, it's going to become very hard to manage. So you need some sort of ticketing system that can uh, raise tickets when something is wrong and help you prioritize and, and organize yourself. That way you can quickly check what issues you have that are still pending at, at any moment. Also look out for anything with templates. So templates with pre-written answers to common questions. That way, each time you receive a, a question, you can select the most appropriate, appropriate template to this problem, edit it as you need, and in a few clicks, it, it's sent. It will help you save a lot of time, and it's also a great way to build an internal knowledge base. That way, each time you receive a question where you might not know the answer right away, you can check in your templates if, if the answer is there. Also very important in these tools is uh, any automation. Uh, anything that will make you save time uh, is great. So automatic replies, automatic notifications when an email is getting left too long without an answer. Absolutely great. Also, extractable KPIs. Um, that can be used to identify trends in your support channels and get indi indications on what you need to focus your strategy on. So in our case, for example, um, we categorize all the questions we receive 
on them, we're able to run reports to see the evolution of, of uh, these categories. That way, you will get some insights into what kind of um, question categories you need to, to improve. Now, let's focus on my next uh, recommendation uh, on feedback. Feedback is incredibly valuable. It will he help you better understand your users on your support channels are some of the only places you will receive free feedback like this. So very important to mention. A good common practice um, is to be proactive with your feedback. So when you talk to your users, always ask them what they think of your APIs, what they like, what they would like to see improved, what they dislike. If someone complains about uh, your APIs, always acknowledge their point of view and ask them what they would like to, to improve. Always try to understand your users' needs on how you can, you can help them. When the developer voices their opinion, good or bad, it's usually an opportunity to do better and improve next time. So as you will have guessed, feedback should be used to fuel some of your product strategy. When a developer contacts you with suggestions they have on your APIs, you should always log them somewhere for your product manager to, to review and prioritize. It's very important to also share this feedback with the rest of your team. Uh, everyone needs to be aware of what your users are feeling, so definitely make the feedback available to everyone. So for this, we uh, use Trello uh, because it's very important to, to be organized with feedback, as I said, and uh, Trello gives you uh, the opportunity to collect everything and organize it into a Kanban. And this is great to kind of see um, a pipeline of upcoming improvements. You will easily be able to see the next thing that your team needs to work on. And why not? You can even take a screenshot of this uh, board and share it with a user that's asking for specific improvement. That way, even if you're not able to address the, the need now, you can uh, show them what your other priorities are. It's better than saying, yes, yes, we will tackle this issue and work on it and not give any clear indication on whether or not this will be uh, fixed. For um, my next point, I want to talk about community uh, very quickly. So if your program is mature enough and if you have enough users, you should definitely consider creating a community around your APIs. To me, a strong community uh, is like the holy grail of any API program. It will give you huge benefits to your support. So if you have a big enough community, uh, your developers will start helping each other out whenever they, uh, they have a problem. And this is great because it essentially reduces the number of emails you see coming in. A strong community will also give you the possibility to um, listen to your users a bit closer. And that means more feedback for more meaningful uh, product improvements. And then, of course, um, you will start receiving contributions from your users if your community is big enough. In our case, for example, we started having developers uh, working on SDKs and even writing blog articles for us. And it's absolutely great because you can actually leverage on that content in your support answers and send it to users as uh, community content. This is for, uh, for of course, the most, um, the most advanced programs, but there's ways to achieve this on a smaller scale. So first of all, if you have an open API, I think all of you should be monitoring Stack Overflow. It's the largest online community for developers, and it can give you the foundation for your community. In our case, we try to encourage all our users to ask their technical questions on Stack Overflow, and our team of developer advocates monitors it daily. It's also a great way to establish trust. Imagine if you're a developer looking at different API providers and you see one of them has loads of unanswered questions on Stack Overflow, you might think twice before choosing uh, this provider. So something else to, to facilitate the, um, this community aspect is to create a community channel. In our program, we use Discord. Uh, so we basically have a big group chat where all our users can ask questions. We organize uh, monthly office hours where Anyone can come have a chat with us, ask for feedback on applications and things like this. It's a good way to give your um, users a voice. And we found it was much easier to have uh, meaningful interactions with uh, our users that way. And developers tend to like a lot for, for quick questions. But if you do go down that route, there's a few things to, to consider. Even if it's not the original intent of the, the community channel, it can quickly turn into another support channel. And of course, that has uh, drawbacks as well. But unfortunately, there's not much you can do about it. So if you do uh, create a community channel, you will need to spend some time uh, to monitor and animate it. Otherwise, it will actually have the, the opposite effect than intended if you leave people's questions unanswered and there's not much activity in the, in the community. And of course, remember that communities should be about your users' benefits. So make sure that you add value to your community rather than just collect the benefits. It does have a lot of benefits, but of course, communities should be about your users or not your company. My next point, I'm sure we'll speak loudly to any of you that have worked in support uh, before, and it's basically to look after the people that are handling your, your support channels. I'm saying this because unfortunately, due to the nature of the role, a lot of people that contact support only do so when something wrong happened, right? 
uh, they either encountered a bug or they couldn't find the answers uh, by themselves. So this can create a bit of frustration that gets carried over in emails. And over time, it can have a, a negative impact on, on those of us managing support. So if you're working on, on support, uh, the best advice I can give you is make sure that you're not alone. To me, customer facing jobs are great because you tend to harvest all the rewards when things go well, but the opposite is also uh, true. Uh, so be ready for that. There will come uh, busy times where you'll encounter angry users uh, on complaints, but uh, don't let it get, get you stressed. It's part of the, the job, it happens to, to all of us. Uh, so if that's uh, the case for you, the best advice I can give you is make sure that you're, you're not alone. Going back to my first point, make sure that you know who are all the, the experts in your company and that you have defined a process for how to, to interact with them on even some internal SLAs if you can, so you know when to expect answers. And of course, don't be scared to, to vent to your team and to uh, ask for help if needed. In our program, we uh, quickly established the support roster after we saw that the support was too much to, to handle for one person. And this worked great for us, firstly, because it allows you to share the workload with, with the rest of the team. And uh, it will also give everyone uh, the chance to train and stay closer to uh, users and closer to reality, which is, of course, very important. I also uh, want to say that in order to keep sane, um, don't overanalyze things. I'm saying this because you will get some, let's call them lazy questions. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean your APIs or your user experience is bad. It happens to us too. We sometimes receive um, interesting questions like the one you see here on the screen, uh, which is a real example. Someone asking us for APIs. So you can have uh, loads of guides, very easy to use uh, APIs, onboarding guides and everything you want, but you will receive questions like this. Um, it's just the, the reality of the world. Sometimes people would prefer contacting support than looking for answers by themselves. So. If any doubts, you uh, start to doubt your content uh, and start to question that your user experience or your content is not enough, please uh, don't uh, overthink things. Carry out some user testing sessions if you think that's a problem, but don't overanalyze every single uh, support question you get. It will drive you crazy. And my last and probably most important point is to make sure that you do everything uh, with empathy. What does that mean? Uh, be understanding and caring. Try to put yourself in your uh, user's shoes and see their issues through that point of view. How would you feel if you were in a, in a situation? As I mentioned earlier, uh, developers put a lot of trust in companies when they use that te technology. Imagine if your API is down for a few days and a startup is relying on it for their business. That could be um, break or make it for them. So you definitely need to acknowledge the, the trust that developers are putting in your service. Empathy is... Um, it's very powerful, but of course, it's also very hard to fake. So I would advise anyone to just uh, be themselves and keep some of their personality. I know, for example, some companies use very uh, strict scripts when they talk to customers, and I would personally avoid things like that. Don't get me wrong, it's a very good idea to sit down with your team and agree on a common messaging, things that you can and, and sh shouldn't say. But a very strict script will make you lose uh, this authenticity, and you want to, of course, be uh, yourself as much as possible. And uh, my last point, um, you should do everything with a long-term customer success mindset. Uh, this means go to the bottom of topics, give your users recommendations, show them the next steps whenever possible, rather than focusing on just answering a question as quickly as possible and forgetting about them. If, your work, uh, if you work in support, your job is to make sure that your API users are as, successfully, as successful as possible in a project. So for this, adopt a long-term mindset rather than focusing on answering questions. So to uh, wrap it up, uh, I will say that uh, there's no magical solution for good uh, dev support, but you should definitely consider this as one of the most important aspects of your program, as it can have a direct impact on everything else. In a world where um, expectations are always rising and your number of competitors is rapidly increasing, you need to pay attention to support. But as I said, uh, don't get stressed, uh, keep calm and carry on, as they say. Uh, take it day by day and don't allow uh, yourself and your support team to, to get overwhelmed. You will turn into complaints on the angry customers at one point or another, but uh, don't let it get you down. Also, don't be afraid to innovate. Uh, what worked for us might uh, not work for everyone, so try to find uh, the right solution for you and adapt your, your strategy accordingly. And, uh, of course, um, try to do everything you do with empathy. Be as authentic and honest as possible. Never sell or, or market to your users. It's, it's likely they will see through that right away. But instead, uh, be yourself, be understanding, and always try to, to add value to your API users whenever you, you can. And uh, that was it for me today. I hope you found it interesting. I'll be happy to, to take any questions now or, or later.
Okay, Matt. Thanks very much. That was uh, very interesting. You've got experience being in the trenches yourself. Um, <laughs> you just go ahead and stop your your screen share there. Um, so we've got a bit more space. In the screen. Sure. I have one question, and that's uh, you know from my own experience as well. We we, we struggled quite a lot on the last API program I was at. Um, uh, in determining whether we should have like one centralized uh, support team who handled support for all APIs, or whether you know we should go for more. You know, we had a DevOps approach where you know you build it, you support it, basically approach. Uh, which, which approach do you think works best? Um, so I can only speak uh, in our in our case, but um, just to give you some context. We obviously APIs are not our core business, so we have a central team that is solely focused on uh, on the token API. So for us, this works uh, absolutely great because um, the people that are working on support are experts in the APIs. They've used them before, they've dealt with them before. Whereas if you have something perhaps more central, um, they would be more focused on the, let's say, the, the cash cow in the company on the other aspects, um, maybe not related to APIs. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question from Larry as well, right? He says, uh, any ideas for encouraging developers to respond to the post-support case survey we send the developers? Mm. Uh, yeah, actually, that's something we're struggling with as well. It's always hard to uh, to engage uh, users and to get answers. But um, again, I would say that there's no one one solution. Um, perhaps leveraging on the community is, uh, is uh, an, um, a good solution. So make sure you offer uh, some kind of uh, incentive if you can, uh, whether it is um, some kind of coaching or, or feedback sessions, like I mentioned, things like that are usually uh, quite appreciated. So um, yeah, um, answer to a survey in exchange of uh, an hour of uh, um, expert, something like that sounds uh, quite, um, would, would be quite appealing. I, I think like a PlayStation 5 might do the trick, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of thing that it was like. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so one uh, other idea I had as well with uh, the uh, you say you're using Discord or a lot of people maybe using Slack and having these you know uh, developers go there and then you're chatting there um, and then yeah it's a problem when people start going there and just asking support questions because it's very easy. Have you experimented at all with any kind of like API integration that might you know recognize that it's a question? Uh, and then say, okay, would you like to open a support request with us and actually, you know, use use your, uh, you know, eat your own dog food effect? <laughs> yeah, that, that does sound really interesting. Uh, not in our case, at the moment, we're more focused on uh, releasing more APIs uh, rather than, than support. But yeah, that, that would be amazing. Uh, or something similar in, uh, in pull requests on, on GitHub would be uh, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, but you should definitely uh, have a look at, into that. Uh, great. Well, Matt, thank you very much. That was a very interesting session. And uh, yeah, thanks. 